just sort of do something that's this sort of like sort of this thing like that like one maybe, sentence yeah just one thing and not so much like a, you know a whole bunch of stuff happening it's more decided than aggressive and the battlefield is aggressive yeah right yeah this is more decided so that goes from aggression like <laughs> okay, so this is melancholy. And then from there you just pass on to this melody and um, decisive moment. Based on... Yeah. D minor. What's interesting is it's, it's basically a melody that just like goes up in like almost half steps gradually and just like climb. Climb, 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 and then it's like down, 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 down. <laughs> I, I directly fell in love uh, with the work of Catherine Young and Carol Janetti and uh, we set this appointment and Catherine wasn't here so I just went to New York to meet with her and, and I told her about this idea of um, making music with the text that I've written uh, in, back in 2011 and which was uh, like a song poetry to begin with it didn't make a lot of sense it didn't have uh, like a semantic meaning to it or like a, it, it was written in the form of a screen play it was a theater play but it wasn't just communicating um, uh, words, it was more communicating uh, sounds and emotions that arrived with those sounds. Having this like huge piece of information <laughs> and trying to decipher it and understand what it meant because the text is so complex for me and I think there's a lot of parts of the text that I wasn't quite understanding but I still felt like reading it was important even though I wasn't going to understand everything. You know, as a vocalist, like the sound of the words were important. And that's kind of gave me an idea of what, how I could start to create sounds. In that I'm really interested in those sounds and the, the, uh, the emotions and expressions that come through that don't come through words, you know, because words are very, you know, <sighs> There are these like real like, heavy blocks of information, and then there's emotion underneath that, and I'm just trying to go with like the feeling underneath that. Carol Genetti's um, uh, work, where she uses the, these sounds but not words, and she's singing but not singing, she's talking but not talking, kind of this uh, a very ambivalent line, but she knows exactly what she's doing, so that influences the project a lot. I can start quieter too. I think I like it. Loud? Yeah, loud is
a yeah. dynamic yeah. twist. Come back in with the exact same thing with someone else in focus. And then we start, so it's these sort of unnatural starts and stops that then provide a friction and a kind of almost the oppression, the oppressiveness is sort of implied by these sort of structural, structural starts and stop, yeah, forced endings. And One thing that's been really interesting and challenging about this project is the number of layers of translation that are going on. There's this text which gets translated into sculptures which then gets and then the text gets translated into a different language and then it's translated into music and then we have language you know kind of challenges with you're speaking English it's not your your first language we, I don't speak any Turkish we are trying to talk about music which isn't your medium but you know so there's like a lot of layers of sort of translation going on in this project constantly. As you can see in this version of it, we were like, okay, this person talks here, this person talks here, and we sort of broke it down into um, solos and duos and trios and small ensembles so that it could be could be translated into performance for, for musicians. So we were, yeah, we were going in a very micro level, but not really about so much content as about like structure. And that was sort of one layer. And then each of us had to sort of work to understand our characters and find um, find some aspects of the text that were salient for us to understand the character, and then translate that into um, into you know sonic material. More like I sometimes I think come in and like <laughs> over right. you guys, and then and mm -hmm. like sort of comment, and I'm uh -huh. kind of like this like obnoxious like uh -huh. thing that kind of like flits around. Okay. That's my understanding of my character's job uh -huh. in Act 1. Uh -huh. And I'm not really sure about yours or Audrey's, but like they're kind of slightly more peripheral in Act 1. Uh -huh. And then Act 2 is different and it's like Eli's materials become the base and we all have to, we all kind of orient ourselves that way. Mm -hmm. And so there's this sort of zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, going specific, getting general, going structural, being, getting this sort of emotional feel moving back and forth between these different registers and that was kind of the process over <laughs> two years, three years, you know. And usually when I do that, actually I mix it with this, that one. Yeah. So yeah. if that's done together, but we can do that also. Okay. It's a kind of overwhelming experience, and I kind of take that experience of trying to read it and translate that into my character, just trying to take the feeling that I get from the actual words and how they're surrounded by the other characters' statements, and it's more of this sort of nebulous feeling. In order to not just be a tool for the for the actual piece. I'm trying to filter everything that I feel from the characters and then make it also my own. I'm trying to become instead of interpreting. You know, when the kids, they, just before they switch to start actually speaking real words, they have this weird pre-language thing where they start to speak with the inflection of language like, ha, 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 ha. Like a little bit mimicking what they hear the adults doing, but it's not language yet. It's, it's not there, but the intention is there and the discovery of what language is, but it's before it happens. And that's, for me, a super fascinating area. And 
all the areas, even when you're an adult and you know how to speak and you know how to communicate, all the underlying emotions that are underneath the words. A lot of people speak and they have, they don't mean anything of what they say, you know, or, or, or they can't quite communicate what they really mean to say because it's really hard to communicate. Language is really limited in a way. I mean, it's a really most necessary and beautiful form of communication. But how about everything else? Yeah, I almost view my role in this as um, kind of a, a person that says, action, end. There's so many moments throughout the piece that uh, the length of blocks, the length of phrases, what material is happening is dependent on a wine glass cue or something. So, uh. so 
and appropriately feel when it should move on, or um, create material that everybody else will use. Yeah. For me, this, this project is on a spectrum of like what I'll call literalism all the way to complete abstraction. And I would say that um, as the, the director of saying, now go, end scene, um, I'm kind of closer to, on the spectrum to the original text, and it's their job to further abstract what's going on. And so it makes sense to me, like I feel, I feel comfortable about this, that there are moments where it is literal. Well, the, the, his voice is, is this palette of, of sounds that, that you and I have chosen together, even though there are points where he can kind of step up and, and come through and sort of fight his way to, to being heard. Uh, so actually, that, that's, it's really nice how this uh, limited vocabulary that I'm dealing with uh, helps me, like, right off the bat, get into this character and feeling sort of stifled in some ways. For me, thinking about text and then thinking about trying to use my instruments in a vocal way. It's, it's something that I've thought a lot about. Sawing away at a cymbal with a, with a screw and thinking about like phrases in the way that someone is trying to speak. Someone who's being suppressed trying to speak. Someone who's got their mouth, you know, gagged trying to speak or whatever. This idea of sort of the political tone behind the, the text in terms of how a society is formed and breaks apart and when, where its strength comes from and where it where the sort of power relations and so I mean power dynamics are most generally they're at play. <laughs> Thank you.
So it was like a very kind of layered way of working, but we, we resolved all these throughout these years with Catherine and with our trying to kind of, we kind of find a formulation of how to translate that uh, specific text into this specific music. And the music is specific right now because we know uh, that in which se section, who's playing, what kind of mood, what kind of pace, what volume, what, you know, like this kind of uh, um, parameters or kind of our limits. Reiteration of that piece of the five person buffet, that was an installation piece based on the concept or the, the piece. <laughs> this is like another completely different piece. So we've made the choice to create a piece that's hopefully its own thing on its own. And I think that it came from this text, but in, in the end, it's kind of, it's got to be its own thing, so.